Thank you for joining this training on creating rubrics. This pre-recorded webinar will walk you through how you can create your own rubrics to accompany any skills you add to the eight employability skills we have highlighted. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to look at terminology related to creating rubrics for additional employability skills. The benefits of having rubrics, parts of a rubric, steps to creating rubrics, rubric best practices, and some examples related to employability skills. There is some important terminology to cover in this session. First, it's important to define what a rubric is. In this case, a rubric is a set of measurable criteria that you, as a program staff person, can use to objectively rate a core member's work, service, or skills. As you think about the additional skills and develop rubrics of your own, ask yourself, what tasks would show proficiency in that skill? We suggest you keep the terminology simple, and for our purposes, skills and tasks are used. Skills are the abilities needed to do a task or job well, while tasks are the application of a skill or competency. Creating rubrics to accompany your identified skills has many benefits. It ensures consistency when assessing added skills. It provides transparency around what success looks like, so all employees are aware of the expectations. It provides a baseline for core members to build skills and provide additional resources when needed. It helps core members to achieve goals and improve performance by integrating supervisor feedback and it helps core members to evaluate their own skills. The detailed rubric is made up of three parts. The first is the rating scale for performance levels, also referred to as performance or proficiency indicators. In the template, you'll find that this is already determined for you as emerging, developing, proficient, and advanced. Emerging indicates that core members, that a core member has little to no experience with the skill and are being exposed to the skill for the first time. They will need specific and intentional training or coaching to become more experienced. Developing, indicate, developing indicates that core members has some experience with the skill. For example, they may have used the skill once or twice with some success. They may need or would like additional training and or coaching to become proficient. Proficient indicates the core member can accomplish the skill with very little guidance, coaching, or training. And advanced indicates the core members know the skill well enough that they can teach the skill to someone else. They feel confident that they can coach and train others to be more proficient in the skill. The second part of the rubric is the criteria that describes the skill. For example, in the communication skill, one description includes writing emails and other forms of written communication clearly and taking the time to check spelling and grammar. Finally, the third part is the indicators for each performance level and criterion. This is where you can list tasks and how well or little they are performed by the participant. For example, one of the indicators for the example before includes writes with many typos, grammar, or spelling errors, and does not review and edit before sharing the final product. Now that you have a better idea of what the parts of the rubric are, we can begin to look at the steps for creating a rubric that includes describing what you want to assess, List out all of the ways you can think of to demonstrate proficiency with that skill. For example, let's use storytelling. To demonstrate proficiency in storytelling, you may wanna see the following. Stories are written with appropriate grammar, punctuation, and spelling. Stories about other individuals use quotes appropriately. Quotes are approved by interviewees. Narratives do not contain stereotypes or show bias toward a certain group of people. Listing out all of the tasks 
gives you the basis of a rubric you can use later to assess proficiency. For your convenience, we have included a blank rubric template to edit. Some best practices you can keep in mind when creating rubrics include building rubrics based on industry skills and focus. Think about the industry and what is most important when you decide on key indicators. What skills should employees in that industry possess? Try listing all the tasks required in a specific industry. This will help you to visualize skills and fill in any gaps that might be missing. Use parallel and friendly language. You will wanna make sure that the language from the rubric, from rubric to rubric and column to column is similar and the syntax and wording match. In addition, language should match the level and skill of participants and should not be too advanced. If there is an indicator described in one category, it should be described in the next category. Taking these steps ensures clarity and transparency to participants. Avoid rubric fatigue, keep it simple. Make sure to take advantage of the rubric template and use existing rubrics as a guide. Rely on descriptive language. The most effective descriptions are those that use specific information. This means avoiding words like good and excellent. At the same time, don't rely on numbers such as number of resources as your crutch. Focus your rubric language on the quality use of whatever sources core members find and on the best possible way of aligning that data to the work. It isn't about the number of sources and excellent is too vague for core members. Be specific and descriptive. Let's use an example. Imagine a situation where you have a participant that is tasked, tasked with collaborating with local public libraries to host storytelling sessions for youth community members at their, as their service. Start with what you want the end result to be. Write out the tasks that are needed. And then from there, build out the skill or skills that are needed for that to be accomplished. Here in this example, the end results needed are, stories are written with appropriate grammar, punctuation, and spelling. Stories about other individuals use quotes appropriately. Quotes are approved by interviewees. Narratives do not contain stereotypes or show a bias toward a certain group of people. Narrative is appropriate for the audience. We can use this list of results to fill in the descriptive details potential performance tasks, and detailed rubric for skills needed for storytelling. So thank you for being part of this session. To recap, a rubric is a set of measurable criteria that supervisor or, or an organization can use to objectively rate a participant's work or skills. The rubrics that we use for the employability skills have three parts, rating skill for performance levels, the criteria that describes the skill and indicators for each performance level and criterion. When you begin building your own rubric, start by deciding what you want to assess. Identify the rubric components and test the rubric to ensure it meets the standards and needs of that skill. This process can take time, patience, and practice, but in the long run, it's an important step to identifying and enhancing employability skills for your service year core members.